Okay, and welcome to a new video which is all about capacitors. Now, have any of you opened up an electrical thing and seen these little cylindrical things and wondered what they are? Those things are called capacitors and I'm going to show you what they're for and what they do. Now, capacitors come in all shapes and of course all sizes. And capacitors store tiny amounts of electrical charge. A bit like a battery. Now, I know what you're saying. This seems really impractical, doesn't it? But capacitors are really useful, and in this video, you'll see why. Now, first up, I'm going to show you an example of how a capacitor stores an electrical charge. So, what I've got here is an ordinary battery, an ordinary capacitor, and an ordinary motor with a bit of tape stuck on it so you can see if it's turning. So, firstly, I'll charge the capacitor with the battery. Okay, that should be enough. Now I'm going to connect it to the motor. There you go. When I connected up the motor, the capacitor could then release all its energy and power the motor for about a second. Well, now when it comes to capacitor types, there are only two. You've got electrolytic capacitors here, which always look like these cylindrical things, and these smaller ones which are non-electrolytics. Now, the main difference between electrolytic capacitors and non-electrolytics is electrolytic capacitors have a negative and a positive. As you can see on this one here, the negative is marked, and on some of them they mark the positive as well, but it's nearly always the negative that's marked, so you can determine which lead is negative and which lead is positive. Non-electrolytic capacitors do not have a negative or a positive, so they can be connected either way and their capacitance is always much smaller. Electrolytic capacitors are always measured in microfarads. This one here says 220 and there's a weird U and F. So that's a 220 microfarad capacitor. And if you're going to replace these, you must take note of the voltage. This says 160 volts. So if you're going to replace that capacitor, you must use one that has the same voltage rating on it or higher. Because in this case, this capacitor could have anything up to 160 volts going through it. Now, non-electrolytic capacitors are measured in picofarads. If it's got two numbers on it, like this one here, this one says 10, that's a 10 picofarad. And this one here says 104 on it. So, does that mean it's 104 picofarads? Well, actually, no. If it's got three numbers on it, what you do, you take the first two numbers, then the third number, which in this case is four, tells you how many zeros to add. So this is 10, Zero, 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 zero. So that's 100,000 picofarads, which is also 100 nanofarads, and 0.1 microfarads. Uh, maybe this will clear things up. One microfarad is 1,000 nanofarads, and one microfarad is also 1 million picofarads. And one nanofarad is 1,000 picofarads. So, there's a thousand picofarads in a nanofarad, there's a million picofarads in a microfarad, and there's a thousand nanofarads in a microfarad. Now, you're probably confused at this point. I know I would be if I was learning this, but I'm going to put up a link to a chart that has all the capacitor values and what they are in picofarads and nanofarads and microfarads and whatever. Because on some schematics, sometimes you might need to convert between nanofarads and picofarads and whatever. Now this, not this, but this is the circuit symbol for a capacitor, and it pretty much represents what's inside. If we actually have a look at what's inside a capacitor, I'm not going to do this because these things absolutely stink inside, but this is pretty much what a capacitor is made of. There's two electrodes here, which are simply metal foil, there's an insulating layer in between, and of course you've got the two wires that connect them to the outside. And this is not some kind of snail, it's uh, how the electrodes and that are wrapped up inside a capacitor. As you can see it's all coiled round, and the dark lines are the represent the electrodes, and this dotted line represents the insulating layer. And then of course you've got the two connecting wires, and that's pretty much what you'll find inside a capacitor. In fact, there we go, there's a picture of what a capacitor looks like taken apart. So what is a capacitor actually used for? Well, a capacitor's main job is filtering. 
They can be used to filter out AC or DC. Now AC is alternating current, and that is electricity that is constantly changing direction. DC is an electrical current that is constantly flowing in the same direction. Now back to our capacitor, battery and motor rig. A battery gives out DC, and now I'm going to show you how a capacitor will filter out DC. So I'm just going to connect the battery, the motor and the capacitor in series. Note how this is being connected. You can see it very well. As you see, the motor spins for a while while the capacitor charges up, and now the capacitor has charged. There is no direct current flowing. Now, if I have it all connected in parallel, I'm just trying to show you this as easy as I can. As you see, the motor is hitting my hand. It does not filter out the DC at all. Now, let's do the same with AC. Okay, so this is our AC power source, which is a transformer, and got two LEDs here to indicate whether current is flowing or not and these two resistors just pretend they're not here because I've had to add these to the circuit to limit the current because you know excessive current from the transformer could damage things including the transformer including the LEDs and including the capacitor so that's why those resistors are there but let's see what happens if we connect the capacitor in series As you can see, the LEDs light up. Now, if I connect the tra um, if I connect the capacitor in parallel, you can see that the LEDs go out because when you get a good connection, of course. The capacitor in parallel blocks the AC. So, capacitors are pretty useful in power supplies. This is the, a typical power supply schematic. Now what we have here is a transformer connects to the mains, and the transformer simply changes the voltage. Next along it goes into a rectifier, which is usually made up of this arrangement of four diodes. A diode is a component that only lets electricity flow one way, it's sort of like a one-way street for electricity. And after that it goes into the capacitor and you get DC output. And here we have the sort of, um, I don't know, waveforms I guess. Now at the transformer we have AC, which if you remember constantly changes direction. Then the rectifier turns it into this, which is, again, it's going up and down like AC does, but it's all going in the same direction. And then the capacitor smooths it out so it's more like this. I've kind of exaggerated the roughness here, but that's pretty much what you'll find. And here's a power supply I made. You can see this transformer right here. Next along there is a arrangement of four diodes. And over there is the smoothing capacitor. Now let's have some fun with discharging capacitors. Now I'm going to charge up the capacitor with this transformer and diode. So it's now charging. And to discharge these small voltage capacitors, you just simply short them out. Okay, so that looked pretty violent, didn't it? But in fact, those sparks are completely harmless, as I will now demonstrate. There we go, it's charged. Put my hand in the path of the sparks. Absolutely painless. See, none a mark, unlike the knife. As for my hand, absolutely fine, just look at that. Now for high voltage capacitors, like 60 volts or more, this one's a 400 volt, it wouldn't be safe to just short it out like that. What you do is take a high power resistor, at least 5 watts and 1 kilo ohm, and you just put the resistor across the resistor and capacitor terminals like that. And of course, both ways of discharging these capacitors can be done while the capacitor is still on the circuit board. 
So if you want to discharge one of these capacitors, just simply find where it is on the circuit board and then short it out. I have absolutely no idea where the capacitor is. Oh, there's one right there. We just short it out like that. Or if it's a high voltage capacitor, you'd get the resistor and do the same thing. Just make sure you don't actually touch the contacts of the resistor. Anyway, that's my video about capacitors, and until next time, goodbye.